everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you another wig from Eniola Hair. This is Lola, she is a Remy Human Hair piece, under $1,000, just beautiful. I reviewed Willow from Eniola about six months ago. She has the same style, just a different color. I'll make sure that review is linked below. If you're curious about Lola or Eniola Hair or what products I used on this human hair wig to achieve this straight, sleek look, then stick around, I will cover all of it. Like I said in the intro, I reviewed Willow from Eniola Hair a while back. She is a darker color, and in that one, I had gotten a medium cap, and I'm really interested in trying a small cap in some of the brands I've reviewed just to see how they might fit me differently now that I have a smaller head measurement due to weight loss. All of my head measurements are in the description below so that you can compare to yours and try to make a good purchasing decision. What I like about human hair wigs is you can typically find them in different cap sizes versus the major name brand synthetics. Most of them come in just an average cap without any option to order either larger or smaller. So that is one of the benefits of buying human hair wigs is you often get a cap size option. Toward the end of the video, I will tell you guys the products that I used on this to achieve this sleek, straight look. I also have a, an air dried segment that I filmed and that will also be on the end. So if you wanna see how this piece air dries, that will be included on the end. She air dries very much like this. All I really did was I use a hot air brush to smooth her out, but she really air dries with a beautiful, very slight bend, not wavy, not frizzy, an easy one if, if your preference is to just air dry your Let's wig and take a look it. at Lola from all sides. You can see she is a classic bob length wig. The slightest of layering to give it that really nice, smooth, somewhat rounded look. A little bit of layering in the front, but for the most part, it's an all one length classic bob cut, which is actually fairly hard to find in the human hair wig world. It's really easy to find longer wigs and layered pieces, but shorter pieces and bob length is a little bit challenging, and so I'm really grateful to Eniola for carrying a style like this. Not all of us have a hairstylist to take our wigs to, and for many of us, this is overwhelming enough. Never mind thinking about having to get a wig customized, so I'm really appreciative that she did this. Now, because this is human hair, you can curl it, so if you don't prefer this kind of straight, sleek look, you can take a curling iron and add curl to it. You can really style it any way that you would have styled your bio hair. Now this cap is what's considered a 13 inch lace frontal. I have a video showing how I cut my lace frontals because I don't like to have to use glue on my wigs. And while this is a glueless piece, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit when I show you inside the cap, the challenge with 13 inches of lace, I left most of the lace here, even though I typically cut all of this back, I will link a video I put in the description showing how I actually cut 13 inch lace fronts so that I can tuck them and I don't have to worry about it. But for those of you who either don't tuck your hair or maybe you don't have any bio hair, a 13 inch lace front is gonna give you a natural hairline all the way down. See all that lace right there? When you leave most of this lace long, what you can do is use a little bit of an adhesive. You basically adhere that lace down and then I'll hold it because it's not glued. You can pull that hair back and it will look like a hairline all the way down. So then you can tuck this, you can style it off your face. And even if you do have bio hair, you can still glue that down if you want to. My personal preference, how I like to wear my wigs, and that doesn't mean it's right or wrong way, it's just how I prefer to do it, is I like to pull out my own bio hair. That's why I buzz everything but this hair right here. And so then I cut this back and then I can take my own bio hair and blend it. And if it doesn't blend with the color, I can use root touch-up powder and it will work perfectly. So all that to say, a 13 inch lace front, while it can pose some challenges to the new wig wearer, learning how to cut it back so that it works best for you, it does have a lot of flexibility and it allows 
everyone to be able to wear a wig in the way that they'd like, whether you have hair to blend or not. It's great. Now, I didn't always feel that way about lace frontals, but now that I know how to work with them, I kind of made it my mission to teach you guys about it because I don't want you to struggle the same way that I struggled with those lace fronts. Let's look inside this cap. So we've got, that's the lace frontal. So you've got no ear tabs. Lace goes all the way. And then that's all parting space up there. We have a lot of lace on this one that gives you a ton of flexibility as to where you part this piece. We've got closed wefting, a comb in the back, extended nape, hook adjusters, and a strap, which I'll show you in just a moment. That is what allows this to be glueless. Because this doesn't have any ear tabs, you don't get any tension on that lace. This lace up here, normally what helps it to lay super flat is the tension that's created with the lace attached to the ear tabs. Because this doesn't have those, you can add a strap that's gonna pull a little bit and create the tension that's missing. So let's take a look So what you do is you hook the strap through the little loops that are on the wig, and then you put it on like you normally would, but you tuck the strap, I'm gonna loosen this a little bit, you tuck the strap behind your head, and then you pull the wig over the strap. And then you get it up into place, you arrange, However, you've got those ear tabs. And now what that wig does, or what that strap does, is it gives a little bit more tension. It helps with the security of the wig to hold it on your head a little bit tighter and to help you with more flatness on the lace. Now, the way that I cut the lace back, I don't need the strap because the lace will lay flat without all of that here. But for those of you who wanna keep that lace longer or who find wigs to be a little bit loose, that strap is gonna really add some security. So it's a nice feature to have, but you can remove it if you don't wanna use it. Let's take a look at that lace front. It is so good. Pre-plucked, no dark knots, just a great job. I didn't cut the lace back super far because I never do at first. I kinda of wanna get a feel for it. Uh, you also wanna leave that lace a little bit longer so it will give you the option to cut it back if it does fray, which can happen over time. Lace is quite fragile. Great lace front. Now, one thing that I have noticed about Eniola hair, while this says it's 130 density on her site, I do find there to be a, some fullness all throughout. It does feel really full. So I would say compared to other 130 density wigs that I have, this is kind of an extra full 130 density. One thing to keep in mind with human hair wigs, there is no standard when it comes to density. So every retailer has a little bit of a different definition of 130 density. So just so you know, it doesn't feel super heavy, but it does feel fuller and like a lot more hair all throughout compared, like I said, compared to other 130 density pieces that I So got. let's talk about fit. The first wig that I had gotten from her was a, a, a medium cap. That was... My circumference used to be 22 inches, now it's 21 and a quarter. So this time around I got a small cap and it fits me perfectly. If your measurements are anywhere near mine, I think a small cap would be a good choice for you. You can find all my measurements in the description. One thing I have noticed with lace frontals is they do tend to fit me a little big. So while I can wear a medium cap still pretty well, uh, on a lace frontal, that medium cap is really, really loose on me. I, oh, I can only wear them with a wig grip. And I have noticed that this one, while it's still a little loose, because we've got no tension here, remember, it's still, um, it's way more comfortable. And I do believe I could wear this without a wig grip. I wouldn't want to do that if I'm going somewhere where, you know, I'm going to be jostling my wig around a lot. But for, you know, just running errands, sitting and at the office or something like this, I could comfortably wear this without a wig grip. It does fit me great. I don't get any extra cap on the top, which I really appreciate. No bulking up here at all. That is one thing I typically have an issue with on medium caps because I have a very petite over the top of my head. So this small cap fits me perfectly. Definitely the size I recommend if your measurements are very similar to Let's mine. Let's talk about this color. So. This color is what I would consider a medium blonde with just ever so slightly darker roots. These roots 
are not dark at all. This looks like you have blonde hair and you get a little bit of highlighting done to it. A little bit of a money piece in the front. This does not look like a brunette who gets her hair colored blonde. And the root is just a shade darker than the rest of the blonde in this piece. It's not a light blonde, it's more of a dark, medium to dark blonde with some lighter blonde highlights. I would say this is slightly warm, but it is not a yellow blonde, so this is kind of leaning more neutral to warm. But do keep in mind, human hair wig color is going to vary. These are handmade. Human hair wigs are not colored by machine when you get to this point. They may be lightened in more of a general sense, but when the, um, when the finishing color is done, it is done by a person. So you're gonna get some variation in color and all hair takes color just a little bit differently. I like, I've heard it said, just like eyebrows, wigs are sisters, but they're not twins. I'll get outside so you can see this color outside and I will tack on kind of what I did to get it to look like this and show you the products that I used. You can stick around if you wanna see those things. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please check out Eniola. They've been so gracious to partner with me so I could bring you this information. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, here you go outside. Definitely some money pieces, but you can see not, I think the root is the same as kind of the low lights. Blondes all across. If I wanted to wear this one and I were to cut that lace back like I typically do, I would just use some blonde root touch-up powder on my bio hair and that would blend just fine. Okay, so when you're wearing a wig straight, you're not putting any curl in it and you want it to have more of a smooth look, you really do need some sort of a smoothing cream. I have two that I really like. The first one is this Keep It Calm by Beach Waver. I love this stuff so much and I highly recommend it. But it goes out of stock periodically and I had a friend recommend this to me, Bedhead After Party. They work very similarly. They're similarly, they're smoothing creams. So once you've got your hair styled, then you can just run it on your hands and just smooth it over to give it more of that smooth, polished look and tame any flyaways. I recommend both of these strongly. I'll put them both in the description and I do have a discount for this. This one I bought on Amazon. And the way that I got it smooth like this, now I had already mentioned I'm just grabbing it. I have it on a chair over here. I had mentioned that, um, well, you've seen how this one air dries if you've watched this all the way through. I still felt the need to smooth it out a little bit and to get the ends a little more rounded because they weren't like this from air drying. That's where a hot airbrush comes into play. I have this Beach Waver. I love Beach Waver products. Blow brush. It comes in a case that, like this, I just threw those styling products in here, just set them in here. It comes with a flat airbrush, a diffuser, and a directed, like a kind of a concentrated air or hair dryer attachment. And all of these just clip off, snap, or I'm sorry, snap off. Sorry, you guys, I'm trying to do this with a darker background so you can see the color of the hair. And so I'm, I'm makeshift tabling over here. So basically you just take this and you snap it and this comes off. You could use this as a hair dryer as well. And I love that this is basically four tools in one. Let me snap this back in. I can't push the button when I do that. Uh, and so this was a great air hot airbrush and I just took it and I smoothed out this hair all throughout with the hot airbrush. So that's all I did to this. Smoothed it out with this, used a little smoothing cream, and that's all I had to do. It was so easy because this air dried relatively smooth. It only took a few passes to make that work. So great. Hope this helped you guys. Thanks for watching. All right, just showing you how she air dries. Haven't cut the lace yet. I will be cutting that lace shortly. I think she air dries. Absolutely beautiful. There you go.
Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Here are a few videos I think you might enjoy. Go ahead and click on one and watch.